Martin is gone and Mickey is still in question. But the question now is how will LSU look going into next season with Ben Simmons coming to town? And well, is it a month away from the NBA playoffs? We'll give you our opinions on who can make a run at the Larry O'Brien Trophy. So get ready because the power play starts right now. <laughs> Hello all and welcome to the Power Play. I'm Jared Joseph here alongside Man TC. How you doing today, man? man? I'm doing all right, man. I'm glad to uh, be on the show and uh, debate you. Debate Jared. You. All right, yeah. man. All right, we, we, go, we switch it up a little bit. We're just you know a little casual. Okay. You know PTI style. Not not you know. Pardon this, the interruption. Part, but don't pardon it this time. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you. You know back on the show. And yeah. I know, know you're an avid basketball fan, so you let's it. get right into our first topic. Okay. Now, fortunately, I know your love for the Tigers is strong, but I'm going to need some criticism from you. Okay. Of course, the news is known. Jarrell Martin is going to the draft. Mickey is still a question mark at this point. What do you make of Martin's decision and the possibility of Mickey leaving as well? Well, I, th I tell you what, Jared. I think Martin, it was his time to leave. You know, he had, he had sent out an evaluation last season and decided to come back for his sophomore year and improve, and he definitely did. He's the type of player that can really – compete professionally because he, he can bring you outside and inside and he's shown that um, in his two seasons so I think it was it was his time to leave you know I know LSU fans wanted him back but um, I don't blame him for leaving um, Jordan Mickey on the other hand is one of those guys that reminds me a little bit more of uh, Tyrus Thomas uh, Johnny O'Brien where he can benefit from coming back a third year his junior season and we know LSU can benefit as well if he comes back but it's, all, it's just a matter of time before we find out the decision of Mickey, but I think LSU fans have to be happy with the future of the program, especially with Ben Simmons coming in. Of course, that's going to leave a great question, a, a great, you know, come up for the next year. Right. My, my issue here, though, is that Mickey and Martin are almost the same body frame, 6'10", 235, 6'8", 235. That's Mickey. Yeah. But Mickey averages more rebounds. Um, he led the SEC, if I'm not mistaken, and but, but Martin has that almost double double with about what yeah. 16, 17 points and about 9.2 rebounds. If we're being 100% technical, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know if Martin's ready for it. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jarrell, Jarrell is ready for it, but I don't think Mickey is. Yeah, and I think that's why his decision is taking a little bit longer. He's really thinking it through right. and talking with his parents and figuring out if this is the right time for him to go to the draft. And I, and I know it's hard to turn down that kind of money, but, yeah. uh, you know, he's 6'8", 235. Well, I can see Martin's position in the NBA. I can see him being a three. And that being said, he's bigger body type already. If he can become more more um, well-rounded, both offensively and yeah. defensively, he's about the same height as Kevin Durant if you're talking about trying to he's be on a, a team that can compete. He's a three, stretch four, and Mickey is more of a, a uh, big man. He's more of a power forward center, even though he's a little bit shorter for a center in the NBA. Right. But his game, if he if he can develop more of an outside shot, yeah. then Jordan Mickey, you know, he's he's going to be really something if, else. If Mickey wants to be able to go somewhere where he can, or, or he wants to get into the league, he has to try to, in my opinion, model his game a little bit after Paul Millsap. Because Paul yeah. Millsap is a shorter power forward, but he's been successful. Yeah. And he's on one of the best teams in the, na in the uh, NBA right now. Well, you see it in the NBA now. And if you're over 6'10", that's not an excuse not to be able to shoot. You know, you got the Marcus Sauls, the Anthony Davises, Lam Lamarcus Aldridge's. you got to be able to shoot the ball outside. you got the other no Saul. So, yeah, exactly. So, so there's no excuse for that. Martin, Martin, I think, would do good. I think, you know, he's not going to shine right away. He's no. going to have to de he's, yeah, he'll develop. Yeah, he'll develop, yeah. But uh, this team... Would have been a top uh, a final four in my opinion if all three were going to be there next season. Just oh the yeah. Front court alone. Yeah. But uh, great discussion, great discussion, T sizzle. <laughs> we got. We'll see what happens. We got live from college to the pros. Let's go jump in. Now, now you stated earlier the NBA playoffs are less than a month away, and the yeah. race for the trophy gradually heating. Oh yeah, it's season. on fire. That being said, which teams do you think will meet up in the finals and hoist up that trophy? And and that being said, you know if you have any other teams you think that just can't even make a run at it, let me know. Well. I tell you, at, at the beginning of the season, Cleveland didn't look too good. But in this past two months, since the All-Star break, they, they've really changed their game. And I think they are the favorite, even though Atlanta Hawks have the best record in the East. The Cleveland Cavaliers are the favorite to make the finals out of the East. And it really, <laughs> it's kind of a crapshoot in the East. It's either the Hawks or, you know, the Hawks or, the or Cleveland. 
You can. Who else can you name? Toronto, maybe? No, they. they no, that's just, you could have named Washington, but they. They've nonetheless. They've fell stepped off. back a little bit, yeah. And in the Western Conference, it's honestly up for grabs. Anybody. Right now, the Warriors have looked fantastic the entire season, but they, they have. But but, but I, when it playoff time comes, the, the, the Spurs are in the talk. You are, you can't you can't deny there's that. A, there's a Spurs. Unfortunately, I, I don't. I, my motto in playoff says pay rent, and y'all know I, you know we talk <laughs> about. You got to pay rent. You want to win the playoffs, pay rent, get pay your rent. paint. I'm talking to you, Paul Morgan, but you got to pay rent. Nonetheless, <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. But. Pay rent is, is from my boy, Paul. That's what you said. But, oh, okay. But you got the Rockets who, uh, you know, they have Dwight Howard. If he can come back and not just be complacent to James Harden's greatness, then they would be successful. You also have, I mean, the Thunder are doing great with Russell Westbrook. Yeah, but they, said, they're not going to be able to make a run if Kevin Durant doesn't come back. Uh, maybe they won't entirely need him for this. I think Russell Westbrook is another Oscar Robinson. He's, he could get a, the last 10 games, <laughs> he's only one rebound away for his average being a triple-double. That's amazing. They took away one of his triple-doubles the other night. When you got to evaluate someone's triple-double, that's when you know you're doing Okay, well, much. let's transition into MVP talk. And you're obviously passionate about Russell Westbrook. Of course I am. He's getting it. He, okay, well, no. Only reason <laughs> Russell Westbrook would not get it is because they're an eighth seed. Yeah. And, and if, they, if Anthony Davis was healthy, because I know you love AD, yeah. if Anthony Davis was healthy and they were – in the position, the, the Thunder, and he was putting in work night in and night out because he's, you know, he's in now, but yeah. you know, he's missed quite a, quite a few games. It, it's tough because no, Russell Westbrook is having a, a, a record-setting season, and um, the only thing that would prevent him, you're right, is one if they didn't make the playoffs, which it's looking like they're going to make it. But if you know, if the committee, whoever votes, just sees him as an eight seed, and then you got another candidate and. Uh, Stephen Curry, his team's got the best record in basketball. Right. So okay, but but I don't think Steph Curry and them gonna win. I don't think they can they can get they might they maybe get to the finals. You think the shooting um, lights out shooting is not gonna? It's no. their shooting team. They live and die by the three. They so. live and die by, by the jump shot in general. Last yeah. time we saw a team get to the finals and live and die by the jump shot, it was it was the OKC Thunder. Yeah, and, and they, they couldn't lost, sustain. They couldn't sustain it. They 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 won the first game, but then, of course they lost the next four, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, to the Miami Heat. Miami Heat, LeBron. But uh, <laughs> the Thunder also have cancer, and unfortunately, I saw. Hey, they got a revamped squad. They have a, if they have cancer and Serge Ibaka comes back, you know, at least in time for some part of the playoffs, because he's out for at least another six weeks, I want to say. Yeah. If he can come back within the first two rounds, I think they can get past the first round. No matter what top seed they play, I think Russell Westbrook can elevate and pass the first round. If he can come back, he can help block for them. Dennis, well, well Cantor for the Thunder had 15 points and 10 rebounds in the first quarter against my Lakers the other night. <laughs> so <laughs> if you can get a double double in one quarter, I think it shows that you could be a slightly dominant in the paint. Yeah. So let's just talk about the MVP candidates, in my opinion, right now. Obviously, Russell Westbrook is up there. Russell. James Harden, just for the fact that he's been doing it without Dwight Howard, and he averages, what is he, the leading scorer in the league? No, he's second leading behind Russell. But he does have eight 40-point games this season. Yeah, and and Stephen Curry, those are the three leading candidates to me. And it, well, the reason is is because <laughs> every night out, those three do something that makes you just go, wow. how, how did he do that, you know? Yeah. Just something amazing. But I, I'm going to give you a fourth, though. I okay. I, I, I've found respect for him somehow. But I can't give you an MVP race without, the M without a former MVP being in it. Okay. And LeBron. LeBron. Well. LeBron deserves to be in it. At least. Yeah, but okay. What's the argument? What's the argument about Kyrie Irving, man? He, he's he's an MVP caliber player too. Okay, but LeBron's on this team, and they're they're what second or third in the in the East. Yeah. They're a top seed in the East. Kyrie Irving was there last year. That's true. I mean, he this was still great. He was still great last year. But, but they they got Kevin Love. They got J.R. Okay, Smith. Okay, but Kevin Love was a shadow of himself from last year. So, yeah, he is. Yeah. He is. He, he's really not the Kevin Love you saw yeah. in Minnesota. Well, okay. So what? What's the difference you think with him it's in just, Cleveland? It's simple. It's his role. He's not that star player. When Ricky Rubio and him were in Minnesota, Ricky Rubio was his was part of his dynamic duo. But Ricky Rubio doesn't have offense to save his life. I mean, he can pass you the ball and he can get steals occasionally, but he he can defend decently, but he can't shoot at all. What do you think this drama is about? You know, they're not. How, Working out in the locker room, Kevin Love and the rest of the team. You think that's grow up, blown out of proportion? Grow up. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you can be friends with your teammates, and you guys have a chance to win the ring. I'm, yeah. I, it's probably blown out of proportion to some degree, but it's probably on the other side of it a good bit of truth. Because you know, I know 
they clowned a little bit, but didn't kind of, we kind of said something like, yeah, you know, we're fine besides this beef we're having. He kind of said something along those lines earlier in the season. Yeah. So we have to, we have to weigh that as well. But nonetheless, I think you might be looking at, I think the, the Cavaliers will, of course, get to the finals. Okay. Who out of the West do you like? Uh, I think it's toss-up, honestly. But I think the Warriors have played great basketball. They can't, Can they I, have to be a favorite. I'm, I'm going to throw a, uh, they're going to be, they have the, the best chance. That's, that's no doubt. But I don't want to just skip over Russell Westbrook. I don't want to skip over the fact that I love LaMarcus Aldridge up in Portland and he's still got to yeah. take a little. They've been sluggish. And don't as of don't late. sleep on the Memphis Grizzlies now. Oh, no, no, no. no. That's, they, that's they, they are, they're a sleeper team. That is the, they sneak up on you. But uh, we have our East team. The West team, I guess, I, I'll go. I'll go with. Uh, I'm going to go with Portland. I'm just going to throw any name okay. in there as a chance. I'm going with Portland. Trailblazers, okay. Well, right. the Warriors are my favorite, but the, fa the problem with them is they're going to likely draw an eight seed in Oklahoma City that is playing at a caliber that they're above an eight seed. Steph Curry <laughs> is great, but they're going to have to put Klay Thompson on him because on, on West Westbrook because he won't be able to stop him. Yeah. But that's all the time we have for today, guys. You know, thank you for coming in. To get I, from, I appreciate it. It was fun, man. For Taylor Corrette, I'm Jared Joseph. Thank you guys for tuning in. Y'all have a great weekend.